digital um, platforms are basically helping us do uh, away with all these imagined. Uh, so initially, you would go take your product, imagine this is what the audience would like to hear or like to see, or whatever. You would spend all this money, produce this massive ad, and take a risk, right? But now, you can break that ad into like 10 places, do a little video, test it out, do another video, do another video, do another video. Recently, I had a meeting with the MBA inside the Nigerian ad agency in Lagos. And he was saying to me that they had a decrease in demand from brands for advertising for ads. So actually, ads. Yeah. And what they asked for more for is short video clips coming from business because that's what the audience is saying they want to watch. And that's more engaging for ads than for brands rather than to reach out to their audience. So that, that for me is one of those things. You see, I'll still keep breaking it down to somebody who just started experiencing this. I'm not a veteran social media at all, you know? Just about two years ago, my makeup artist came and said, Kelechi, I need these images. I said, for what? He said, I need to put them on Instagram. I said, ah, Instagram. Okay, let me put my watermark on it. <laughs> let me optimize the images so they don't steal my work, you know? And she said, okay, please go ahead and do whatever you need. I just must have these images. I gave them to her. She put it on her Instagram and I said, oh, wait a minute, you know, I think I have an Instagram handle. I might as well put the same images up in there. So I put the same images. And then my phone starts going, think of, think of, think of. Who are these people? <laughs> anyway, what fascinated me was that I was getting feedback from real human beings who, if I had enough time to investigate, I could investigate, because um, they are saying a lot about themselves from what they were posting. So I could tell how many photographers, makeup artists, teachers, you know. And then, just about uh, a year ago or thereabout, they now had this section where they had a whole analysis of, of, of your, your engagement. So I'm looking at People of a certain age, breakdown, which countries, which, it was amazing. In fact, I now started trying to find out which countries. And I found out that I had people in the UK, and then I was so surprised the number of people I had in Tanzania. I've never been there before. <laughs> so what's going on in Tanzania? But it was quite a revelation um, to be able to analyze the, 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 the traction your work is getting precisely, you know, and so you're not shooting blind, you know, and you're saying, oh, maybe people will. No, you're getting feedback right there and then. You can analyze it, but you just go to the back end of your know, social media thing and uh, make business, serious business uh, decisions. Yeah. Do you have anything to add? Nothing. Um, once again, it's just the getting to see or getting a sense of the engagement. Um, so the numbers of views, for example, may not be what I'm looking at, but I'm looking at real people who are clicking like or dislike. I'm looking at real people who are click, who are commenting or who are um, sort of making their, their opinions known. Um, so the, the classic case, I'll never forget that the first time I told Chum, Chum and I were experimenting with Facebook Live, it was her in her nightgown, head scarf on, sitting in the living room, finding herself no light, and she, she turns on Facebook Live, and there was 900 comments by the time she was done. Of her just rapping OP, and I just pop in to people, some more response, and she talked back to the screen, and I was like, what the heck is going on? And it's just so interesting that you can super coordinate, meet people and coordinate with them, and know what it is that makes them tick, so you're able to build your content a little bit more. Thank you. And thank you, Janet, for that, because that actually segues into the next question, um, which is, what are some of the things that you've seen in terms of evolution? So what have you observed, like, just in the short past, and what do you see coming up in terms of where digital publishing is going um, in the near future, and you have any insight into the longer term? I think that in Nigeria, so far, it's been experimental. It's been like a lot of people just creating content and seeing um, if there are audiences. There are people that they like this, what do they share, what do they like. 
now the next phase is we want monetization this business now. How do we get this audience to pay for stuff? How do we um, get these views? What, how, what, how does this views translate into cash and money and we can reinvest into this and actually build on businesses? So I think that's, that's the next phase. Well, I, I think this thing is growing uh, really fast um, compared to the, the sort of change that one experiences through one's life. The millennials and you know their children, and in the next few years, those 15 year olds are now going to be the people making the decision, financial decisions. And these people have grown up getting all their information from their phones. Um, unlike people like us, who, when we left university, I had to argue with my sister over whether we should buy a computer or not. <laughs> you know? So what I'm trying to say is that it's, it's a culture now that has become an integral part you know, of people that are growing with that knowledge. And what's going to happen in the near future, I'm not talking plenty years from now, is that this new set of people are going to make all their transactions online. It's already happening, you know, and what it means is that all the business, exchange of money and transactions happening online, has more internet, um, internet is getting more powerful and wider, getting more people into it. It's, it's, we're going completely digital right now, that's what's happening. Jenny was saying earlier about monetization, and I think it's definitely true. But not only monetization in a way for you, the individual, the individual talent, or whatever it is that you have to say. I mean, let's put into perspective, um, Chiga or Chioma, who you call her, was just in, in her mind, her business, making people laugh on, on Blackberry, and it sort of evolved into something that we have no idea how the heck this happened. Um, but then you're, able, you're not able to sort of use this opportunity that you have to, um, to tell your story, to service clients. So I think in evolving into servicing um, clients who have a bottom line too, and you have to quote unquote help grow awareness, sell their product or their service, um, the word or the term influencer comes to bear. Um, at first it was brand ambassador, but I think that is so like last year. Um, so now the word influencer is how do you, how are people who may not, not necessarily be musicians or even actors or Ikelechi for example, who has his own fan base, who has his own audience, can he help a product what? or a service yeah, yeah. monetize more and, and increase their bottom line because he's well respected or he's seen in a certain light. So I think that evolution into servicing the corporate client and not once again not only by um, a comedian who's super duper popular, but it could be a beauty blogger who is now sort of helping some makeup line do work, or someone who's a hairdresser and there's a hair or a wig line. So I think it's evolving into that space where you're servicing your corporate client. So, in that light, how would you then say that a creative who has structured that progress, that growth from? an individual or a small company or even a, a brand house, um, but starting with a small opportunity or a nucleus or a new idea to then take that and grow it into a bigger, better opportunity. I don't, I'm not sure that there's a magic bullet for her. Um, um, I think from everyone that we've seen across the world and even in our environment who have become these kinds of people, there's an element of dedication commitment to what it is that they're doing and I think even belief in what they're doing when nobody is paying attention and it's in those dark days or quiet days that you're perfecting your science or your art or wherever it is that you are um, so that a, a young girl who's minding her business shows somebody how to put on good contour their face you know, that thing that they like and, and like you look like you do and you're afraid and then, you know people just sort of progress and they become better and you're now becoming that person who may be speaking to a L'Oreal is speaking to. I don't know that it's a magic bullet. I think it's just about you consistently doing what you believe in and what you believe you can do. And then finding a way that maybe hopefully differentiates you from everybody else. And that's, I mean, he hits the nail on the head right there. Um, when he was talking about you using social media to the level where you become an influencer, um, 
people are looking probably and not just the number of followers that you have but the level of engagement you know uh, that they have with you and what you do and like he said it, it doesn't matter it can be anything it can be anything provided you know you you do that thing so well so much so that people really want to listen to you or people are interested in what it is you're doing is it humor is it a skill is it knowledge is it news you know whatever it is as far as you have something that makes you stand out of the rest of the people doing the same thing and uh, you have a kind of intensity which comes from passion really and you know one thing i found out is that people can smell something that's not authentic they can feel it it's you know and they switch off easily so if you're looking for what to do no you are looking for what is trending look for what is you and all of us have something unique in us that may, may be interesting to people i mean every day i keep seeing these social media sensations coming out of some very simple things like recently looking at my children they are completely taken by this little i don't know 10 year old boy that just every morning he would make dance and put it on instagram he has millions of followers that's the little child dancing now he's dancing for chris brown and the rest of them and now there's a whole army of little kids who dance you know, after doing their assignment, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is their own work. What I'm saying is, those kids have over a million followers. It's just ridiculous, you know, and they have become influencers. And, well, when they started doing all those dances, they didn't plan to say, you know what, in the next uh, how many years, I'm going to get one million followers, and then I'll be losing products. No, they are just crazy about what they're doing. If you look at the videos, they're not well shot, not with the phone, you know, but they don't turn them out every day. And you can see the raw passion in what they're doing. So they put things like makeup and somebody's talking about, I know how to repair my car by myself. You may be surprised how many people are looking for little tidbits of how to repair your car. You will be surprised what it is. But the most important thing is to believe in yourself and just go for it. And don't put at the back of your mind that you haven't gotten your one million followers. You'll be discouraged that you will end it. You will end it at 